James Bond has many iconic villains, however, none of them are quite as intimidating as Mads Mikkelsen's Le Chief. Bring me one as well, keep the fruit. That's it? Hmm? Anyone want to play poker now? The cat-like financier of global terror pushed Bond to his very limits in the iconic film Casino Royale. He's not just a good villain, though. He's quite possibly the most terrifying Bond villain ever. But before we get too deep, please subscribe to the Nerdstalgic channel in order to keep up with all of our videos. Casino Royale was the first novel published by Ian Fleming in 1953. It starred an as-yet-unknown fictional spy named James Bond. His adventures were loosely based on Fleming's exploits in the British Secret Service during the fever pitch of World War II. Bond would go on to become one of the most famous and successful characters of all time. In 2002, the Bond franchise drove straight into a ditch with Die Another Day, Pierce Brosnan's final and objectively worst outing as the famed 00. Released that same year, the Bourne identity turned the spy genre on its head, instilling a gritty reality, popularizing shaky handheld camera work, and catapulting Matt Damon to another echelon of superstardom. I swear to God, if I even feel somebody behind me, there is no measure to how fast and how hard I will bring this fight to your doorstep. I'm on my own side now. Thus, when it came time to start developing Casino Royale into a new take on the Bond mythos, all eyes turned to their heir apparent Bourne for cues. This gritty realism is showcased perfectly in the film's central antagonist. Director Martin Campbell was brought back into the fold having previously rehabilitated the franchise with Goldeneye. He and longtime Bond screenwriters Robert Wade and Neil Purvis would be the primary creative forces deciding how to reboot Bond, dispatch Bourne, and create one of Bond's most iconic enemies ever in Mads Mikkelsen's The Chief. French for the number, or the cipher, the sheaf exists on celluloid all the way back to Bond's original outing. As long as there's been a Bond, there's been a Le Chief. He appeared played by Peter Lorre as Bond's antagonist in the televised adaptation of Casino Royale on a 1954 episode serialized suspense program, Climax. He also appeared in the comedy adaptation of Casino Royale played by Orson Welles in 1967. And yet, the definitive and most striking version of Le Chief is the version portrayed by Mads Mikkelsen. In the 2006 film, Le Chief is a cold and calculating genius. It's said that he's a chess prodigy, mathematically gifted, and earns large sums of money by financing terrorism around the globe. In an additional character affectation, Le Chief is revealed to suffer from hemolacaria, an arrangement of the tear ducts that causes his eyes to weep blood during moments of extreme stress. Mickelson's turn as the new iconic Bond villain is impressive on a few fronts. Initially, the character feels imposing and threatening due to Mickelson's impassive yet charismatic demeanor. He feels like a man that's always in control. And yet, as the film unravels, we learn just how out of control he truly is. Unlike a traditional Bond villain who is out for money because of greed, Le Chief has his back against the wall. He has a serious problem. He has various deals that have gone wrong with people from the criminal underworld. Therefore, as we move into a Baccarat tournament set up by Le Chief, Bond is forced into a game of wits. As the story escalates, we begin to understand that Le Chief has just as much, if not more, to lose than Bond. These escalating stakes force this character to commit increasingly more desperate acts. Unlike the type of villain Bond usually goes up against, who have cliched massive secret bases, henchmen, and long monologues about holding the world captive for money. This is gold, Mr. Bond. All my life I've been in love with its color, its brilliance. I welcome any enterprise that will increase my stock. Le Chief is a man fighting for survival. He's a caged animal, a wild dog. And that comes through in Mickelson's performance. He has a mania lurking right beneath the surface. Even in the tense poker scenes or standard exposition dump sequences, Le Chief has attention to him. His body language, the way Mickelson carries himself through scenes, his terse dialogue, and the way he gently dabs his eyes as they bleed blood, they all further the idea that he is a man quickly running out of options. In the now iconic Baccarat sequence of the film, Le Chief is engaged in a battle of wills against not only Bond, but CIA operative Felix Leader and an army of ne'er-do-wells from across the globe. In this tense back and forth, Bond eventually unearths Le Chief's tell. In this sequence, it's one of the few moments that Mickelson allows us to see just how rattled the character really is. Bond raises the pot by throwing in a 500,000 chip. Mickelson's acting in this sequence is pitch perfect. He vacillates between visibly shaken to attempting to cover up his displeasure to sternly determined in a matter of seconds. And then he presses his temple, the tell. Le Chief has fallen into Bond's trap. The game is getting out of hand and Le Chief knows it. In the over-the-shoulder shot, Le Chief is repeatedly pressing his temple and fervently glancing back and forth. 
He's trapped. He can feel the walls closing in, but he doesn't want to admit it. Mickelson's body language sells this completely. As the scene ratchets up, Bond and Lashif engage in an ever-increasing game of one-upmanship. They're both given cards which make good hands, but it appears to the viewer that Bond definitely has the winning cards. The direction in the scene bounces back and forth between Lashif and Bond, staring each other down while the blinds grow larger and larger. As the scene builds up in tension, Lashif becomes visibly uncomfortable. He obviously feels backed into a corner. Mickelson has an air of defeat about him, a reservation of a man that has no other options. Just as Bond feels that he has Lashif on the ropes, the sequence climaxes in Bond calling an all-in pot. He's certain that he's going to take Lashif for all he's worth because he's been bluffing this whole time. He's been touching his temple, his tell. Only when the cards are revealed, Lashif comes out on top. Lashif knew Bond knew he was bluffing. Oh, you must have thought I was bluffing, Mr. Bond. Upon rewatching the scene, you realize that Mickelson's Lashif was acting panicked and backed into a corner the whole time as a front. He was actually the person dictating how things progress. This is a perfect example of how cunning and nefarious Lashif is, and how Mickelson completely sells how conniving he is. The fear and panic in his character that exists in the rest of the film is subverted in this scene because you know you think he's scared, but he's actually totally in control. Another pitch-perfect example of how Casino Royale builds its villain is the sequence towards the end of the film where Lashif is interrogating Bond, attempting to get a password from him. In the traditional finale to a Bond film, you'd have Bond and the villain squaring off in a secret lab or underground base or even an ice palace, unfortunately. However, Lashif's modus operandi is guttural and base its subsistence and survival. For the entirety of the film up until this point, we've been in high-class parties, the beautiful villas. Now, we're getting to see who Lashif really is, and the environment reflects that. The environment of the safe house that Bond is being tortured in is a reflection of Lashif. It's a dingy warehouse sub-basement. It's primal, just like the fear running through both antagonist and protagonist. They say a good antagonist pushes your protagonist to their very limits. And that's evidenced here, as Lashif aggressively slams a knotted rope into Bond's groin. The pain seems immeasurable, something that no Bond villain has ever pushed the usually cool, calm, and collected spy to before. Lashif physically pushed Bond to the point that he starts laughing from the pain, and we, the audience, wonder if Bond has lost his mind. No other Bond villain has this effect on 007. Even the classics like Dr. No, Blofeld, and Goldfinger, they're always engaged in a game of wits with Bond. But Lashif is in a struggle for survival. Mads Mikkelsen has the fear of God in his eyes during the whole scene. Yes, he's barking commands at Bond asking for the code. Yes, he's literally torturing him. But it's out of fear, not malice. Which makes the scene even more complicated and engaging. He knows that if he doesn't get this password from Bond, he's as good as dead. And for a split second, when Bond is screaming in pain and laughing simultaneously, you can see Lashif is caught off guard. Did he break Bond? And then, in classic Bond fashion, he has a sarcastic and witty retort. <laughs> now the whole world's gonna know that you don't scratch your fucking balls. <laughs> Ultimately, Lashif has a dark and foreboding presence and personal desperation that sets him apart from every other Bond villain. The fact that he's not motivated by a typical Bond film backstory of greed or revenge is the core of why he's so successful in the film. He's trapped in a web of lies and karmic justice, struggling to free himself of the deals he's made in the past. In many ways, he's a dark mirror image of Bond's future. Bond trades in secrets, betrayal, and murder, but it never seems to catch up to him. He always escapes scot-free, but Lashif is a reminder that death comes for us all, and the decisions we make pile up and will eventually be our undoing. These themes of desperation and tormented survival are almost Shakespearean in their scope. Many people point to Craig's Bond as being the dark and brooding center of the reboot, that he's the reason that Bond was able to recontextualize itself and progress past the over-the-top spy antics of the Brosnan era. While that's true, an often overlooked key to success is the writing and acting that spawned Lashif. He's the menacing, real-world terror that provided the anchor point for the whole picture to revolve around. He's the most understandable and relatable Bond villain ever put on film. And that's why he's so terrifying. Well, that's all we have this week. What do you think? Does Casino Royale rank among the best Bond films ever? Is Lashif the greatest villain to ever go head-to-head -head with 007? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to the Nerdstalgic channel in order to stay up to date with everything happening 
with the Nerdstalgic channel.